You know, the back rooms is a big place. Some believe it's almost infinite. With an ever-growing list of strange and mysterious levels to traverse and survive. It goes without saying that it would be frankly impossible to see all of the back rooms through one set of eyes. Take, for example, the enigmatic levels. The enigmatic levels often have more obscure entrances than the main levels, as well as more bizarre and often threatening content, which, if you're a connoisseur of the main levels, you know is really saying something. There are plenty of enigmatic levels already documented, with all theories pointing to the fact that there are more out there, still waiting to be found. Thankfully, we're not alone on this journey. We've got one of the many poor, tortured souls that populate the back rooms here to help accompany us through our journey into liminal perdition. Meet Trish. Trish was a soldier working for the US military, the only survivor of a four-person squad who accidentally got trapped in the back rooms during their second deployment in Afghanistan. War is, obviously, no picnic, but the back rooms offers horror that our native world could never muster up. Even in the most terrifying of circumstances, Trisha's experience with the military has given her strength, skills, and equipment that the average civilian wouldn't have access to. But what good will that do in the face of monsters that human beings have never before encountered, or at least, encountered and survived? We can try to find the answer to these questions today, in the place where children's dreams and every adult's nightmare comes to life. That wholesome, nostalgic pizza restaurant from the early 80s, Barnaby Bunn's Fun Emporium, where they put the fun into funeral and the laughter into slaughter. Good luck, Trish. We hope you can find your way home. <laughs> Our story begins in the desolate gray hallways of Level 4, the abandoned office, where Trish has been wandering for hours. It's been one of the less dangerous and traumatic levels that Trish has traversed so far. So on some level, she's simply grateful that she hasn't been chased by some horrific grinning monster today. That being said, she hasn't had the good luck of encountering any of the human settlements on this level to replenish her supplies or refill her social batteries. She wants to believe that there needs to be something worthwhile on this level, other than desolate bullpens and broken plastic office chairs from 1999. Then, she gets lucky. She happens upon an elevator with a strange logo printed on the doors, a cartoon of a grinning pink bunny with wide, staring eyes. Underneath, the words Barnaby Bun's Fun Emporium are printed with the tagline, it's Bun for the whole family. How strange. It's the last thing she expects to see in this nightmare reality. Trish ponders for a moment. Why does this feel so incredibly familiar to her? It induces the most peculiar feeling of deja vu. A half-formed memory. She needs to know more. And after all, any direction out of this godforsaken office feels like a positive development for her. So she presses the button waits patiently as the door opens, and steps inside. She forces a smile as the doors close in front of her, and the elevator hums as it begins to descend. This would, of course, be a terrible mistake, but who are we to judge? Soon enough, Trish reaches the bottom, and the elevator doors slide open, revealing another dimly lit hallway with the walls painted in slightly fading primary colors. She steps out, remaining silent, carefully taking in the finer details of her surroundings. The black and white check floor, the occasional discarded party streamer, the archaic looking security camera staring down from above at the open elevator. At her. She wonders where the feet of that security camera leads to, but accepts the fact that this question will probably never receive a satisfactory answer. The elevator doors close behind her, emblazoned in that same Barnaby Bun's Fun Emporium logo. The air smells like old pizza, dirt, and sweat. Not the most appealing combination of sensory inputs, but Trish goes further nonetheless. She unslings the M4 carbine rifle from her shoulder, 
and holds it at the ready, hoping that she won't need to use it, because she only has a couple more mags and a few loose rounds in her backpack. Every single bullet needs to count, or she'll be fresh out soon enough. Still, this whole place evokes uncertain memories within her sharp, focused mind. As she turns the corner into the main hall of the building, she sees a variety of multicolored plastic benches lining the room, covered in garish plates filled with half-eaten pizza and snacks. There are still streamers and party hats laying around, and balloons that should have wilted or popped long ago still float. It's a gimmicky kid's pizza chain, like Chuck E. Cheese and their myriad imitators. They were more common than cockroaches in the 80s and early to mid-90s, and were also likely home to plenty of cockroaches, too. That same grinning pink rabbit, presumably Barnaby, is painted all over the walls in a variety of strange, warped fashions that border on surrealism. It gives Trish the creeps on a deep, primal level. And in that moment, she remembers. It all comes back. It was 1989, the last year this place was open, and she was five years old. Her mom and dad were in the middle of a heated divorce, and the two of them were competing for her affection, while simultaneously having less money than ever. All the stress and tension she was feeling came to a head when she was taken to a Barnaby Buns Fun Emporium for her sixth birthday party. She hated the food and all the loud, blaring music. It was an all-around assault on the senses. So when whatever hapless employee who wore the mascot suit was forced to come and sing her a public domain happy birthday song, she broke down into sobbing tears of mortal terror. It took over an hour to console her. Even now, she shudders at the thought of that damn mascot costume. Its cheapness lent it a kind of unsettling jank that even top-end horror movies couldn't replicate. Thank God this awful place shut down. That gives Trish pause. She tries to recollect. Why did this place close down again? There was some kind of scandal. Some illicit behavior from the owners. She remembers her mom being extremely evasive around it. Trish continues to sneak slowly through the tacky old restaurant. She's no dummy. She's not making a sound, not doing anything that might give away her position. If someone, or worse, something, is in here, she wants to maintain the element of surprise. Given some of the beasts she's already faced down here, it's likely that element might be the only feather in her cap. The place seems abandoned, so it makes her jump when she notices some figures huddled around a table in the corner. Are those kids? She needs to help them get out of this nightmare. But as she approaches, she comes to the half-relieving, half-disturbing realization that these aren't children at all. They're decrepit old mannequins, dressed in ratty children's clothes, one of which looks like a homemade sweater, with a slightly malformed T-Rex stitched into it. Just looking at it gives Trish the creeps. She steps away, doubling her caution and begins searching the rest of the building, her M4 still drawn. She passes through a broken down arcade, the boxes coated in dust, and many of the screens smashed in, or covered with an out of order sign. One of the arcade boxes, a dilapidated game called Polybius, has the words Game Over scrawled over the glass. Trish begins to feel a weight on her chest, as though some invisible, oppressive force has been following her slowly growing in power and influence. She needs to keep moving, or something terrible will happen to her. Trish inches past the filthy-looking ball pit, which she remembers freaking her out as a kid. Back then, she imagined it secretly being full of snakes, gators, and sharks. Now, she pictures it being full of dirty needles and diseases that nobody has contracted since 1926 disgusting. Eventually, she finds her way to a discreet door labeled Staff Only. Perhaps this would be the manager's office. If there are answers anywhere in this terrible place, they're here. With a little bit of careful jimmying, the lock comes open soon enough, leading her into a room that looks like it hasn't been inhabited by human beings in decades. The air is thick with dust and dead skin particles. The light is dim and murky, 
The room is dominated mostly by a large metal desk, every drawer locked. But what attracts Trish's interest is the manager's choice of wall decals. The wall is practically plastered with missing posters, featuring faded, smiling pictures of people of all ages. Trish gulps, the narrative suddenly forming in her mind. One of the many missing posters draws her eye. House Daniger. A young boy wearing a homemade sweater with a T-Rex sewn into it. Exactly like the shirt Trish had seen on one of the mannequins earlier. Trish decides she'd much rather hang around the abandoned office on level 4, than spend another second in this absolute nightmare. But the second she steps out of the office to make her way back to the elevator, she realizes that this new mission might be easier said than done. Because she's not alone on this level, and the level's other occupant is standing in the shadows a few feet in front of her. Trish, meet Barnaby Bunn, your worst nightmare. Well, this entity isn't Barnaby Bunn per se, but it certainly looks like a Barnaby Bunn mascot suit, the same one tied into Trish's childhood trauma, given a life of its own. This life-sized bad news bunny stares at Trish with its big cartoonish eyes and tilts its head menacingly. Maybe it's a little gung-ho of her, but Trish drops to one knee and opens fire with her M4, peppering the freaky mascot with bullets. Immediately, Barnaby begins to advance, taking confident, powerful strides, seemingly utterly unfazed by the barrage of ballistics. When Barnaby closes the distance in a matter of seconds, Trish almost feels her heart stop. With seemingly impossible speed, Barnaby wrenches the rifle from Trish's grip and snaps it in the middle like a twig, before casting it aside and grabbing Trish by the throat. She feels his grip stronger than steel around her throat as he lifts her clear off the ground, still staring impassively with his big cartoony eyes, as though this little interaction means nothing to him. Trish can feel her world going dark. She needs to do something quick or she's going to die in the decaying memory of a crappy old pizza restaurant. Her adrenaline kicks into overdrive, and she balls her fist, punching Barnaby in his big sneering head again and again. He shows no sign of pain, but little by little, his grip loosens, causing Trish to fall back to the ground, coughing and spluttering. Now's her chance, thinking fast, with her rifle destroyed, she reaches into her bag and pulls out a grenade. In one fluid motion, she pulls out the pin, stuffs it into the void behind Barnaby's buck teeth, and makes a mad dash for the hall. Seconds later, she hears an almighty explosion and looks behind her to see that the rest of the store has been consumed by an inferno, smoke billowing out into the hallway after her. It seems as though the whole building has been destroyed. But then, she hears footsteps, getting closer and closer, until Barnaby Bunn, utterly unharmed, walks out of the flames. Trish knows now that there's no point in even trying to fight him. Instead, she turns and runs for her life towards the elevator, hearing his footsteps behind her. She hammers on the call button and turns to see that Barnaby is only a few feet away. When the doors finally open, and she practically leaps in and hits the button for level four. But why isn't the elevator going up? Once again, she sees Barnaby Bunn sliding his paws in between the doors and prying them open like some movie maniac. Trish screams, and with all her strength, delivers a booted kick to Barnaby's face, causing him to tumble back just long enough for the doors to close and the elevator to begin its ascent. Trish collapses against the back of the elevator, breathing heavily, glad to be alive, but once again, shocked and terrified by just how bad things can get down here. Little does she know, it's going to get much, much worse. Want to continue your journey into all facets of the endless mystery that is the back rooms? Check out level zero, entering the back rooms. For more on this seemingly infinite abyss, from Backrooms Explained. See you soon, friends.